Next, we're going to look at a somewhat trickier distance problem, um, which is finding the distance between skew lines. So remember that with skew lines, you've got a couple of lines, and they are not parallel, and they don't intersect. So I'm, I'm not going to try to draw a coordinate system, but imagine that these lines are, uh, well, what we'll do, just to try to make this more clear, is these lines are in a pair of parallel planes. Okay, So we'll draw those planes in just as a, a reference so we can see that. All right, so typically, you know, you're going to be given something like, you know, say L1 of, let's say, S will be, say, well, let's do it this way, P1 plus T times V1. L2 of, let's say, T is, oh, sorry, and that should be S. So used to writing T. All right. Um, will be, say, P2 plus T times V2, All right? So what does it mean to say that we've got the distance between those two skew lines, right? Well, distance should mean, as usual, shortest distance. And so somewhere, somewhere in space, there, there's a point where those two lines, you know, there's a point on either line that sort of minimizes the distance. So we, among all possible choices of point on the first line and on the second, there's sort of a, a minimizing distance. Um, and so let's say that is the distance we seek. Okay. Um, so I'm going to call these points, we don't know what they are, let's call them Q1, Q2 on my lines uh, L1 and L2. Right. Okay. So as usual, the, the trouble is that the, in the information that we're given defining the lines, Right, the, the points P1 and P2, they, they might not have anything to do with the points Q1 and Q2. So maybe, maybe P1 is here, right? and maybe, maybe P2 is here. Right? And, and so we can form a vector between those two lines, like so. Let's call that vector, say, W, right, this vector going from P1 to P2, which is, by the way, just the vector P2 minus the vector P1, okay? And, and so that, you know, it's a vector which begins on one plane, it ends on the other, but it's, you know, it's at some kind of angle. So this, this is longer than it needs to be. It's not the shortest possible vector that you could form. How do we get the shortest one? Well, the other bit of info that we have for our lines is we have the direction vectors, right? We have, say, V2. Uh, we have V1. Uh, we also know that this, this line that we have here that minimizes the distance I'm going to call it N because, you know, pretty soon we're going to be talking about normal vectors to planes and we'll call them N. Um, we have that line there, which has got to be perpendicular to these two planes, right? These two parallel planes. It's got to be the common sort of normal vector for both. It's perpendicular to both. Um, but in particular, it's got to be orthogonal to both of these vectors, right? Because these two vectors are, you know, they're direction vectors for lines that are in these planes. Um, okay, so n is orthogonal to v1 and v2. Well, we know how to construct a vector that does that job, right? It's the cross product. So we can take V1 and cross it with V2. Okay. And, and now what we want is, is we just want sort of the, you know, of this vector here. We want the part that points up, right? And, and it's a little bit harder to visualize. It, it helps maybe if you kind of sort of slide, imagine sliding it over so that the, the tail coincides with this, right? And, and what we want is we don't want the part that's kind of going this way in the direction of the plane. We want just the part of that vector that's going straight up. Um, 
And, and so how do we do that? Well, that's a, that's a projection, right? So the, the vector that we want going from, from Q2, or sorry, from Q1 to Q2, right? That vector is going to be the projection of what we called W onto this normal vector. Okay. All right. Fine. Good. And then, and then to get the the distance, we take the magnitude of that vector. So we take the magnitude. Now, the textbook goes through that. They they simplify the magnitude a little bit, but um, we we know what that looks like. All right. So that's that's one approach. If you are strictly interested in the distance, um, you can realize it as a projection. All right. Now that's just the vector. So the distance that we want, right? The distance is just the magnitude of this projection, right? Of W, which is the vector, you know, um, P2 minus P1 onto this cross product V1 cross V2. And, and once again, you have a formula. Um, here's, a, here's a slightly trickier follow-up question. What are the points um, Q1 and Q2? That's a harder question. Uh, it's a question, actually, you need a little bit of linear algebra to solve it. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll, sh I'll sh I might show you how it works in the example. I think we have time. Um, but um, what we can do is, is we actually have, there's, you know, there's like a third line here, right? Um, what we can do is we can introduce a line three. Uh, let's just use T for the parameter. So this is going to be, um, now I don't know what Q1 is, right? So I'm just gonna call it Q1. Passes through the point Q1 um, in the direction of that normal vector, right? So we still have to find that normal vector. Um, and, and so what we do is to figure out what Q1 has to be. Um, and it, we say, well, you know, this needs to intersect um, line one and line two um, for different values of t, right? So what you can do is you can kind of take this, this normal line and you can kind of work out, you know, figure out how to make it intersect with the two lines. You can play around with that. And, and that would actually let you find the points on those lines. Um, it's a much more difficult problem um, than finding that kind of closest point on the line like we did in the, uh, in the previous example. Okay. Um, but... Uh, We'll see. We'll see if we can tackle this. Certainly, we'll at least do an example of finding the distance, kind of the basic example of finding the distance. But we'll uh, we'll see if we can deal with this part as well.